Hi everybody, I missed you. <laughs> Did you miss me? <laughs> well, we had so many things happening and uh, time to do a video. Hi Maggie. <laughs> she hears me talking. So, um, we have a few good videos to come and this one today. But first I should say, um, how does all this flooding in BC affect us in the interior? In Salmon Arm, specifically. Uh, well, we went shopping Friday thinking we were going to buy groceries and the produce, the milk, the eggs, all those shelves were completely empty because um, everybody is we don't know when we are going to get trucks because what happens is the train tracks and the highway most often used for bringing products up to us is destroyed. The Coquihalla is um, repairable, but it's winter and it's a disaster. There's some very major areas that are just unbelievable because these are mountain passes and so our main source of supplies of mail of everything uh, comes from the coast so that is major for us living up here and uh, there is the old highway that was used before we have the Coquihalla and it's called the Fraser Canyon. Now the Fraser, Fraser Canyon can probably be fixed quicker. It takes longer to get up here. It's a little worse road-wise because it's not used much anymore. And there's a few major areas, the Hope Princeton area, um, Merritt, major areas to fix. Plus, way more important than us getting this stuff, even though we complain, is the farmers on the coast because they are our main supply in BC for eggs and milk and vegetables, all from that beautiful flat land that is now flooded. And it brings tears to your eyes if you watch it. And, but people, people of all races are together like real close friends. Times like this, everybody thinks of everybody else and go out of their way to help each other. And that's very heartwarming. Uh, so they are actually first on the list to get things fixed because... There's thousands of people out of their homes and livestock's dying, many things. So I, I'm not going to go into it. It's on the news. You can read about it. Now, they're planning to send our stuff that we need, our mail. Um, <laughs> they'll probably fly up what they can and the rest will go down through the states, up through Alberta and then back to this way so I'm sure prices costs of everything is going to rise so anyway I thought what better thing to do is spend some time with you guys I really do appreciate your your company and your comments and I read them to mom I read them to Jack because it's it's a lifeline for companionship so in these strange days. So what are we going to do today? Well, first I have to show you that purple orchid back there. I bought that orchid home on September 7th in full bloom. We do know that when the orchids are in full bloom, it's taken them, you know, a month or more to become full bloom. So how long do orchids stay in bloom? Well, four or five months if you're really lucky, maybe longer. So um, 
Then on September 7th, oh no, October 28th, I cut that spike off. One part, which was part the part that had probably bloomed first, it um, it started to come off, so I cut it. Now here we are, the middle of October, and I still have it in a vase. <laughs> that is amazing. This is one healthy orchid, and later I'll do you a tour and show you how the mother plant is doing. Now, how did I keep it this long? Well, I did change the acidity of the water, of our tap water, and added a little um, lemon juice to the water. And then I cleaned it halfway, dumped the water out, I added a little soda water, and low salt soda water, and lemon juice, just a little, and that is all I've done, and it is still, we are still enjoying it. So, cut or on the plant is giving the plant some time to get rooted and get used to its new surroundings. So, I just wanted to say that. And then, I have these two little orchids that I got on June the 11th. Now, these little pots are very nice, but they're just not working for me here. Our weather is cold, the house is, is the furnace is running. Even with pebble trays, they're drying out. Now first, this one is Melitasia Charles Finch, and she's looking pretty good. Like, this has been since uh, June 11th, and there is some tiny little roots. They're after the humidity because I keep pebble trays under them. And that's really important for any of these ones that really like more humidity than the Phalaenopsis do. Now, I have Melitonopsis Breathless Brilliant. Now, she's telling me if you see these wrinkled leaves. She's telling me too many changes with watering. She's drying out too fast, even though I give a second watering and I miss the outside. She's drying out too fast. So today, even though I know the roots don't like to stir, but you have to weigh the pros and the cons. And to me, I have found that now, watering day was Wednesday. I am liking these little baskets for the ones that like, they're just in a wetter part of the forest naturally. They're used to lots of heavy humidity, and maybe cooler, and water coming lots, but always able to drain through. So these, as far as in the home, trying to supply the natural habitat, these, I feel, are working really good. And, and I can feel the bottoms. I can miss the outside, which is encouraging roots. Roots will always grow towards the humidity. That's why some people have a little water in a glass vase. That's uh, many types of other people growing with water. Roots will always grow towards the humidity. Therefore, pebble trays, whatever you can do, your misters, anything to keep humidity around the plant. And these are more so than the fells. So I did put her, this is Fell Sogo Becker. She, uh, I got her, did the video November 5th. And uh, she's doing really well. Her bud hasn't opened now. She's been in a darker area of the house because I'm still waiting for those windows. But things are looking good and I don't mind. I could put extra light on her, but I really don't mind. She's getting used to it and she's not too dry. And I'm liking these because if I, I was to run one of these pots under the tap, which I did to these, the water streams right through. 
So there's still lots of air and uh, they're a little bit bigger so they're not going to dry out as fast on me and they're quick to deal with. Now this was a, a banana tree and it's working out real good. So some I can hang this way and later when I take you for a, a tour of the orchids I'll show you how I'm going to hang them over here for now until we're set up with new windows and who knows how long or where they are. <laughs> so um, I'm happy with this. This one is looking good. It's got new buds coming out. It's looking healthy. And the other ones that I got in April, I think Fal Alfinia is on her last flower for now, which is good. I'd like to see her, her grow some uh, leaves, but it's not the growing season and it, it will come. And she seems happy. She seems happy. The leaves are still firm. And so, you know, she can't, she's not going to flower forever. She needs to grow. So these ones I'm leaving in these pots for now. <laughs> Look at this. This is what I said, growing towards humidity. <laughs> so um, this one seems very happy. Val, now, all right, Val, Sheriana, <laughs> I don't know. So um, there we go. April 28th, she is looking really happy. So I'm not changing these ones. The pots are a little bigger, they get air, they drain quick. They're still very good. But what I have done is I have ordered, these are a little bit smaller than this one. These are six inch, six inch baskets. And I got them through Canada at uh, Ecstasy. Just one minute, I'll go wide my finger at Maggie. There. <laughs> I just did it. You know, don't start. <laughs> okay, so um, sometimes she just wants attention. So these were six inch. I like the size and um, they're almost exactly the same. They're the same design and they're a little bit smaller, and I think they're good. The hanging wire is a little heavier, but made exactly the same way, so you can change where it hangs, how it hangs, which I have done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna repot them, and I've been soaking bark for quite a few days, but it's cold out there, so I wasn't like too worried about it. So I've been soaking some bark. So we'll, we're going to use the bark in the pot too, because the bark is fine. I've also soaked the lava rock, and it's a good idea. I like the size. Now, if I could get perlite, and I've seen people do it, get this side. I use it, but all I ever find is this real thin stuff, and I, I don't care for it. So, we're going to put some lava rock in here. It's, it's just another thing to add. It'll hold the humidity for a little while, and it's also airspace. Maggie, don't. That's what it's like around here. <laughs> Life as it is. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Valsheriana. Best I could do. My tongue kind of twists around that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just twist her upside down very carefully. The roots are very fragile. So watering day was Wednesday. And I have changed to some lava rock, but it is basically pretty dry. But it, it, the water isn't running out as quick. And the pot, for, for here, for in this wintry weather, I'm not that uh, happy with it. Now, I don't want to disturb the roots too much, but I'm going to show you what we have. 
very closely here. There's some, whoops, just a minute. There. We'll let the ones fall off that want to fall off. Okay. Have a good look. The roots are looking pretty good. There's some new little shoots. Uh, and like I say, there's some new ones coming. They like the humidity, so um, it's just a lot more care involved to get them to this stage. So without bothering it too much and just gently putting in this. Now that little root that was kind of sticking up, I'm going to leave still sort of right at the surface. Sometimes with aerial roots, which you want to leave in the air, they're growing up there to get humidity. <coughs> Sometimes you can solve the problem just by putting them, if you want to get a few of them into the pot, just by putting them right at the surface under a very thin layer. I have planted it a little high. You know what? I have to dump some out. I don't want to go too high. I have to take more out. There we go. That's looking better. Okay. Twist you in. They love to feel comfortable in there. Okay. Let's try that. Get some weight on it. Because I don't plan on repotting them again. I think this is going to be just perfect. That's what I because I had changed to the bark and the lava because that moss was just a little too, but it was too up and down, uh, drying out too fast. And with the winter ahead and the furnace being on, it's not not the best situation. So there we are with Melatasia Charles Martin Fitch. <laughs> now she was doing good. I didn't, there's no like pleated leaves. She was doing good and um, I'll show you how they're going to hang but I'm not going to go hang it right down. So there's the first one, and uh, I'll just put her over there for now, probably drip on the counter, and now the pleated leaves on the melatonopsis. So let's put some bark in. Now this bark um, was soaked in uh, seaweed extract for uh, a week or two. <laughs> so I wasn't sure what I would need it for, but I, I had it ready. And it was the very bottom of, of a huge bag. So the, it was finer, it's medium fur bark, but it was finer. So I think it was, um, actually better for the tiny little roots. So let's move that there. Now, now pebble trays, you see uh, this basket, uh, it's doing so well, I just slipped this out of here, but because I have the pebble tray underneath, it's getting humidity up. And uh, I'm not doing it for all of them, but I did see a uh, orchid video, and I think it was bean orchids, something like that. Um, in their in their little solarium, a glassed-in area in England, I believe, they had a huge long tray about about that thick and really long and full of rocks, little pebble rocks, and water to keep their humidity good. So if you're somewhere even drier than we are. You could have, I have individual pebble trays under ones I know need it, or especially when you have a newly potted orchid, you want a little more humidity. And the humidity encourages those roots to grow. So um, 
they had all their orchids sitting on this huge big thing. And I remembered one time I picked up at a grass sale or something those old fashioned uh, plastic, heavy duty plastic, but they went over ceiling lights. And um, I had used it in the greenhouse because it was perfect. So, you know, you have to kind of think out of your box if you want a big tray that you can do. And I have also found that if I throw a little charcoal in with the pebbles or the glass beads, it doesn't need wash so often. It keeps it sweeter. It doesn't get smelly. And then when I wash it, it's easier to do. I just throw it in a big strainer, rinse it all out, spray it down with hydrogen peroxide or something, wash it really good, put it back. So that's just how I handle that. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So I know this one. I feel I worry about them. So <laughs> better to, to do now. You know, I could show you this, what's happening. It is, it, watering day was Wednesday, but it just doesn't have the airflow down here. It seems to stay wetter. Um, it's just not what I really want. And I, have, I like these, you know. So, oh, if it feels a little dry, I can miss the edges. And with these, now, I do not miss the surface of my fells, but with these, I do miss the top. They can take it, they dry out quicker, and they like the extra moisture more. So, oh, where'd my other basket go? Oh, here it is. Okay, so here's the other basket. Now, my other baskets in the window, we'll look at later. I had bought the roll of cocoa fiber, and it was a little more flimsier, falling apart, where when they made these, I don't know what they used to compress, maybe some kind of, I don't know, but water still flows. It stays really good. So, now I want to show you this one. The roots look good, but in the middle they are not. The ones on the outside, but where it was staying, I'm going to show you. Okay, on the outside, nice little roots. But on the inside here, okay, they're not soggy, but they're, they're not good. And I knew there was something, so I'm glad I did it. I, I don't want... I don't want to leave anything that's not firm because it'll just lay near something that's healthy and probably rot it. So there is a few here that aren't good. You can tell they're limp. So we're taking them off. And this is why we check our pots. But it was talking to me. So there was just um, too much, not enough air too, too uh, clogged, but some nice new roots near the outside, there. So what we want to do is clean these up, because we don't want anything left in here. That um, causes a problem for the rest of the plant. We have some nice healthy roots. And I think these ones are all good. So it just wasn't getting the air movement it should. And now I think I'll be sticking with the once a week watering just like I will. The once a week watering but with some misting. Some light misting on the edges. And uh, I just want to have a close look here. Make sure I got it. I was supposed to be vacuuming, and, but, <laughs> you know, priorities. And this is, this is fun. This is orchid playing. Okay, now we're looking good. I feel better. It's going into its new home. I feel good about the ones that we're getting more. I think these are going to be perfect. Now, that was pretty dry. 
So the top part of the pot, where the roots are really good, is fairly dry. See if I that is fairly dry. It feels dry. But the bottom, see, where the center of the plant was, it just was clogged up in there. So it water was settling, even though it's porous. Just for it here, it, it wasn't good and I, I, I knew it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in there because we don't want feeding. That feeding was saying, hey, you're not doing something right for me. And it's not disastrous. It, it's uh, The cymbidiums will do that too. And uh, it's not disastrous, but it just says something's not right in the care and change it. And, and it's a good time to look and make sure everything is fine. So, I think these pots are excellent. Just because they are different, different care than the fells. There, I'll use those. Now, yeah, I'm going to dump this in here. And I'll just show you closer. See, there's the bottom of the pot. No air holes. I think it was Scott, he said, put air holes. See, with the air holes, it would have been that much better, but I still would have been watering a lot. So the bottom is definitely, but it's good. So I can still use these, but I'm going to put them at the top where they'll dry out quicker. There's nothing wrong with them, is they're new, but they're not going in the bottom. So, I think it was a decision um, to just um, reassess. So, I'm liking this. I'm going to put it here. I'm just going to rinse my hands so I don't get the camera off. And I'm going to take you for a little tour. Hmm. It's not something exciting. And if you have dendrobiums in a cool room and you've noticed little buds, cool room, uh, they, they don't like to be as cold as the cymbidiums. But they like to be cool. Mine I just put in the fall out on the top shelf of the greenhouse. So we're dropping to about 55, maybe 54, which is about as low as you want to go. But once you see all those little buds coming, then you can slowly start watering. And once you see them coming, you can bring them in. The warmth of your home then will help them uh, start to grow quicker and some people say oh no if you bring them in too soon those little buds will turn into cakeys uh no once the buds have made up their mind what they're going to be they're going to be it so i'm going to show you the dendrobiums that i just brought in and uh put in an area where they get lots of light but they're not because of the glass top of the garden windows they're they're not overly warm. So I'm going to take you on a tour and we'll check things out <laughs> now. So I think this is good. I think they're going to be happy in these. And I'll show you a close up over here. This one has been in this window right across from the table and seems happy. So. Um, over here, the little setup I put in the big pot, it's also getting misted on the surface a lot, but there's only one drain hole on the bottom, and that's where the maidenhair fern is, so uh, it drains slower, so probably good for the plants I put in there. Okay, let's check this out. I've left my lights on. Now, here where these lights went yellow is from the sun shining on other times of the year. And this side, 
not so yellow because uh, it doesn't get the sun coming in from that way. And you see what we've got out here. Early snow. Yep. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Okay, the ones I marked with these little um, pipe cleaners were the two that got no care all summer. Were out in the out in the greenhouse in the over a hundred degrees because of all the glass and and this one's spiking and the other one is down in there and it is also spiking. So this is the pot that fell and broke that's going to go in my new traffic cone. Uh, they had beautiful flowers. I remember when I got them at the same time, but they're getting some nice spikes and they will, ooh, that one's kind of stuck. There we go. Now when I put them back, I try to put them facing the same way or sometimes if I have a bend going to the right, I try to get it so the light kind of makes it straighten out a bit. So they will be going in their new home and you can see where it hit the floor. Right here, it hit the pot and the leaf. Kind of sad, but the new leaves are good and, and I, I'm not really worried. It's got very good root system. So that was the one that had the accident. And look what's happening here. You know when I say roots grow to humidity? Now I will never cut those off again. Poor thing. I'll never, I'll shake all the bark out and put in new bark when it needs it. <laughs> I will never cut them off and take that plant out. They did not like that. So these baskets were from the rolled matting. They have been in here for quite a few years and I'm scared to go back and find out how long. But they're nicely spiking, all three of them. So we'll probably come spring, they'll have to get repotted. And you know, always think out of the box. Now this window's high, so I had this hanging around for years. It was a candelabra I picked up at a grad sale, real cheap. And I thought, it's great for this window. Now this is how I can hang things. You see? And the six inch one fits just right and I can put three there. And I can put them at different angles and hang them from different parts. So, you know, <laughs> always thinking what, how you can do things. Now, the Monet pot it has, uh, this one has two spikes coming and this one here has a little spike over here and this one here, somehow I broke it off but it's, it's coming in. <laughs> so, and we got a nice big spike coming up there and this is my big lip which flowered in summer so she's still getting a new leaf at this time of the year this is moon glow she's going into a pot as soon as she's in bud because this is just too big and the holes are too small so it has two spikes one left on a I may have to start cutting these a little higher and letting it it seems to to want to uh, rebloom on those spikes where some of them just die off. So we're doing good there. And down here we have another one. Now here, this is the the mother plant from the purple orchid that I just got and it's leaves. These ones are firm. This one's probably half, but it's doing a lot better. I have water in the bowl. Many ways to to add humidity. Many ways. So um, let's turn around. Go see what that dog is doing. What is that dog doing? 
she's sleeping. We'll go over there after. I see her sleeping over there. Are you sleepy? <laughs> and we got snow. We'll have to show you out the window. Okay, here I was telling you about the dendrobiums. This one is loaded. We have little buds, little bumps, lots of little bumps. I hope they're all flowers, even in the back. This one is just loaded. Um, remember when I put them in cages? Now the bigger one, it has some nice little ones coming too. And I don't ever get rid of the old spikes where flowers, you could get one there and I think there's some coming down low on that one. But it has not got as many buds this year, but lots of new plants. So this is good. And the little basket is coming good. Not sure about flowering this year. And I broke another little spot. I, I had it badly broken and glued it. But one little piece I have to re-glue. So that... And spikes and more spikes and I'll try and get up here. See up here for the dendrobiums. This is a garden window. I'm getting this exact style, but it's cut a picture it two cut in half so I have this much space but on two windows and the extra light is just great plus I could have my dendrobiums in the other room where it's still bright but cooler and that's why they're up here because it's cooler because of the extra glass so these lights Jack put on some new ones and they're just sticky ones and you have to play with them and he has to do different things because they tend to at first come unstuck. So this was a new orchid. Its leaves are nice and firm and I put it in this sort of clay pot and uh, it's doing really good. And the one I put double in this big pot, which is heavy, look at the newest one that I got on Valentine's Day was in flower for a couple months after that has a spike coming so this one is establishing and see this was a sign of stress and getting used to it so um, it's got real good rooting coming and this is my older orchid very good rooting coming the leaves are all very hard you have to even they're so crisp and it has a beautiful spike coming, growing towards the light. So, um, these are the two funny little spikes. I thought I saw one coming in over here, but too small to really tell. So, for now, we have those. And my Pathial Pedalum, that poor little thing. It's coming. So, um, I have the humidity on because it has been very cold the last few days. And we're off to let you see the snowy, snowy interior. Sometimes we don't get snow till Christmas, but this year, this is what a little spoiled dog looks like. Isn't it, Maggie? Are you night night? Huh? <laughs> She's happy. That's her little pillow. That's her my pillow dog pillow. <laughs> so here we are. Winter. Yeah. Mountains. The snow came down low. I was supposed to get sunny and clear away for a few days, so this is how it looks and I'll be back with another video probably shortly a couple days so we'll see you then and love you all and take care and be safe love you